Nice. Then we're live. GM. 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 Uh, <laughs> how did you do that? Uh, uh, like this. And so, yeah, welcome to another Infinite Space Bazaar workshop. Uh, today we have Nat from Celestial Labs, or NatNet from Celestial Labs, and Kayla from Dora, uh, or Search on Dora. And they're going to be giving us a workshop today on storytelling. So I'm going to go ahead and let you all introduce yourselves uh, and then give you the floor. Thanks, Josh. Can you show the slides? Yeah, there we go. Cool. Um, OK. Hey, everyone. I'm Natalie. Um, I work at Celestial Labs as a DevRel events and programs. Um, I'm here with Kayla. Um, Kayla, do you want to introduce yourself? Hey, I'm Kayla. I'm the product lead from the Search on Dora team. Um, so yeah, so before you guys heard the ideations, workshops, and kind of go-to-market strategy and branding and positioning, and today we kind of want to explore with you the storytelling and how to be better storyteller while... Oh, um, how to be a better storyteller uh, for your presentation and also for your demo day. So uh, we're going to start with story about Kayla. Then we're going to discuss the essentials of this storytelling. Why is it important? How to tell a good story? Uh, what are the types of storytelling? And the second part, we're going to be talking more about storytelling that is tailored for your presentation online. What are the techniques that you can use? what is the way how to create a you know engaging and exciting presentation and then how you can practice storytelling at the end i am gonna talk a little bit more about the community track and also what are the next steps for you to introduce your project nice so in the chat let us know how everyone is feeling today i know nat and i briefly discussed. I feel like we always sit between a two and a six. Yeah. Like I woke up at like two. And I'm like, we have this workshop. We get it. You said four, right? Yeah, I'm also a four. I'm always having a coffee with me too. What about Josh? A six. <laughs> so sweet. GM. Um Okay, five. Let's see what the audience is saying. Two, six. I, I see, because you're, you're a jet lag, right? Yes. Um, cool, so we just wanted to check in uh, with you. How are you guys feeling? Um, but now, Kayla, can you tell us your story? Yeah, let me tell you the story about Kayla. So if you know me or don't know me, I went to the University of Waterloo where I studied in the small town of Waterloo, Ontario, and spent many years in Toronto, Drake's favorite city and the birthplace of him and all great people. Um, after I graduated, I ended up working at IBM where I was a managing consultant on the AI, IoT, ML, basically every buzzword you could ever imagine in the tech industry, that was our team name, um, where during the pandemic, I got really bored and decided to start telling cute little funny, silly stories on TikTok, which ended up creating my series, Becoming an NFT Billionaire and NFTs Explained for Hot Girls, which took off, ended up getting me a job here in New York City, where I was working at a Web3 fashion company, and now currently at Dora, where I'm a product lead. So why is storytelling important? Storytelling has been around for generations. It's how we learn. It's how we pass on traditions. Um, you can call it storytelling. You can call it yapping, gossiping, presenting. I mean, there's so many different formats. But we currently live in an attention economy. And telling great stories is really what's going to give you a competitive edge. So we tell stories all the time. It can be about family moments. It could be about your favorite meme coin. It could be about what happened in your day. 
And communication has really evolved over time. It's not just about having, you know, verbal stories that you're sharing with each other. It's in the format of TikTok. It could be air chats. It's Twitter. It's Instagram. Now we have all these platforms of social media where you have the opportunity to really connect with your audience on a deeper level. I don't know if you saw the chat, but just they said some this workshop is how to escape from the mid <laughs> So persuasion is really at the centerpiece of all business activity. Um, your customers and VCs, if you're pitching to them, they need to be convinced to buy your products or services or give you money. Um, this is really what's going to set apart, you know, the Celestias from the Cosmos and the Solanas. It helps you really engage your clients on an emotional and relatable level. And it should always be your goal to create a culture of storytelling wherever you're working. So if you're at a small startup, if you're at a big company, storytelling is really what leads an impact. So here we have an example of a handful of some very famous storytellers, Maya Angelou. She was notably known for her quote for saying, it's not what you say or what you do, it's how you make people feel. So stories are really all about how you can evoke emotion within your audience. There's Ginny Remini, an ex-IBM CEO who was a leader uh, while I was at the company. And she was always very concise and all about breaking your story into three points that people can cr clearly um, digest and understand. Steve Jobs, obviously, he's one of the goats of storytelling. He's all about creating experiences that people actually want to share and spread. And Sheryl Sandberg, she was all about vulnerability in your story. So having, you know, emotional elements that people can connect to. So in the chat, if you want to let us know, who do you think some of the best web free storytellers are? I know I put a, put a poll on Twitter a few days ago too, and I had a bunch of responses. So I'm curious to see what you guys think. I, I was thinking about this question as well. And I wanted to say that the closest ones that I have around me that are good at storytelling, yeah. Yaz is saying yeah. himself, but I need to agree because I feel like Yaz has been um, explaining stuff in a way that it's a story with facts, and we're going to go over it a little bit later, but this is how you can make the person that is listening to you, you know, more excited and kind of like more understand the topic that you're trying to explain. So I think yeah, I agree. Yaz is a very good storyteller. I would say I can. Uh, has been a really good story to too. Someone said, to be honest, no one comes to mind. <laughs> I was actually going to say Vitalik, maybe not in um, a traditional sense, but I think some of his writing work is actually really interesting. Yaz is a big one. Yaz, you got a lot of fans in the, in the chat here. Yeah. I know, like you mentioned, Ekram. I heard some people say Vitalik. Um, I had a couple other comments in my Twitter. I can also double check that later. But let us know on Twitter, tag us who you think your favorite or best storyteller is in Web3. No Sleep John is cool too. Cool. Cool. Um, now we ask Josh to share. One second, can you stop it? Pause it for a little bit. Thanks. Cool. So what I wanted to share today is just a really quick example of a really good story. So this was actually a commercial from Nike. It's a Michael Jordan commercial. Josh, I don't know if you want to quickly play it for everyone watching today. I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. Do you want to jump to the next slide? So this is like a very understated yet, I think, powerful, powerful commercial that really tells a great story. Um, was there something, everyone in the chat, if you guys want to answer that you really liked about this, what do you think made this story great? A 
I'll give everyone a second. But for me, I think this is actually something really emotional that Michael Jordan touches on. You don't really need to be explicitly told what is happening in this, but he's evoking emotion of like, I was given the game winning shot and I still missed and I still lost, but I still overcame all those challenges. Michael Jordan is successful, but still fails often. Yep. So politicians like to hide the truth. Artists lie to tell the truth. Interesting. That's a great quote, yes. But yeah, something that Michael Jordan does well too, it's like even though you associate him with such great success, he's still making it relatable. He's still pulling on people's emotions. Um, and I think that's what really gets the audience's attention here because you're like, oh, you're so great, but you're still being vulnerable and actually sharing your losses that actually make you even stronger as a person. Stories reveal a truth and a lesson through a story. Yes. And yes, failure is human. Everyone can relate, although he's just a superstar. Exactly. And I think this also really humanizes him in a way that people can relate to him. So it doesn't matter how big or successful you are. I think people need a way to find connection with you and the things that you're sharing. Why don't we jump to the next slide? So we're going to throw it back to grade 11 English class. Here's some of the essentials of a great story. So obviously you have your exposition. This is like an introduction, what's happening, your rising action, a climax. So this is the peak of your story of where everything is really starting to unfold. Falling action is kind of coming towards a resolution and then your resolution, which is kind of your exit or your finale. So whenever you're pitching to a VC, to a client, telling someone about your project, there's ways you can actually apply this method, this story arc into your presentation. So um, if you want to lead with a bang, you want to define your problem or challenge. I'm sure everyone has heard of a TAM or what, what is the problem that your product is actually addressing? Presenting ways your problem can be solved. Your climax would actually be how you're defining your solution as a product, a project, a company. The following action would be understanding how the solution actually works. And then finally, understanding the benefits and putting a plan in action. So like, what's your roadmap? How are you going to accomplish this? How is this applicable to the real life um, in ways that people can relate to? So we have some essentials of what really makes a story great. And I have this broken down into three different sections. So you have your essentials. That's your who, what, where, why, when, how. The customization. So this is the format in which you present how do you grab someone's attention? How do you actually add value to your audience who is paying attention to what you have to say? So I always think what's in it for them? What's in it for me? How do I appeal to their senses? How do I add in pauses? How do I add in, you know, empathy? How do I make my story, whether it's in writing, if it's a video, if it's a presentation, concise, succinct, how am I going to leverage, you know, visuals, animations, videos? How do you make this compelling for someone to actually follow along? And finally, emotion. How do you invoke someone's emotion to actually get them invested in you and what it is that you're trying to tell them? So three things storytellers do better. They understand their audience, they make it relatable, and they keep it engaging. So with this storytelling, like I said many times before, it comes in so many different forms. It can be in the form of visual art. It could be a vlog. It could be podcast, coding, painting. I think you have to think of ways in which you can actually showcase what it is that you want to communicate with an audience in different formats. So it doesn't always have to be a presentation. How can you communicate to someone to set yourself apart and make them understand, especially in the world that we live in with crypto and blockchain, this stuff is so complicated. How do you break it down in a way that's engaging, exciting, and easy for someone who's maybe not technical to understand? And so with that, Nat, do you want to tell us your story? Sorry. Yeah. So. I thought about which story am I going to tell, and I feel like there's a lot of, many of them to explore, but um, the one that is really currently, that I'm really dealing with the most is through experiences. And since I was very young, I've been hosting people and I've been allowing them to have a space to tell their story. So if you guys went to my events, maybe game nights or modular summit, or I, I had this event for, for, for our team as well, which was Paint and Dine, which already kind of connects to storytelling, which was normally if you sit at the table, you tell their sto stories and then engaging through these activities, like learning about yourself by sketching. Um, that was one of my, my favorite um, events that I did. And I allow Great Mind from all around the world to, you know, share the 
story and their wisdom. And the latest one that I would like to go through with you is the creation of the Infinite Space Bazaar. So um, at Celestia, we were discussing doing a hackathon for a long time and whether if it was online or IOL, we decided to go with the online to have kind of more space for feedback for you building and to get ready for the, for the in-person one. So imagine I get this concept of infinite, infinite space with R. And when I was thinking about it, how would I create it and how to make it unique? Because I think this is also a way how I express my, my experiences, like every events or hackathon or the conferences are a little bit unique and differentiated. I was thinking that Infinite Space Bazaar is such a broad space that I someone could get lost. So, and then when I look at the other hackathons, it always had the same process, but I didn't really felt like there's a story behind it. It's just like a one time thing and then it moves on to the next one. So with Infinite Space Bazaar and with the, with the houses, we start thinking about, okay, maybe we can start doing like districts. And one district could be about like data storage. And the other one would be a district under the water that would take care of the infinite uh, infrastructure in the Infinite Space Bazaar. And another one could be in the clouds, the cloud library. And then, I was exploring more and more and I think of Harry Potter and the houses. So when we discuss it in a team, we kind of like move the first idea away with the districts, but we cap the houses and we start giving it a story. So our houses have always, um, but they were four similar to the Harry Potter. They have different colors, each houses. They have names, as you all you know, know, some of you are already in it. Um, they have crests, they have mascots, and we gave them just, let's say, kind of like the foundation um, that led up to here. Now, this is my latest story, and now I want to like give you techniques that you can tell your stories for your project or your presentation. So um, one could be, um, one story that we use is ethos, pathos, and logos. These are the strategies that you, that helps you to communicate better and also to persuade and convince the audience that your points are valid. So ethos is for the credibility. So you're backing up when, when you're talking about when you're using ethos, pathos, and logos, your, your appeal to emotions, to logic, and to credibility. Then there's another converging, um, then another technique that is called converging ideas, which kind of remind me the story that I just told you about Infinite Space Bazaar and, and the process, how it went. You can use it in your presentation as well. Let's say, you know, your team, you meet your team, and then you guys start exploring or brainstorming what do you want to solve or what do you want to work on? So you have a bunch of ideas and you go through all of them in the presentation and then you still continue to have discussion with your team and debates and someone disagree with your idea and you don't agree with the other ideas. But then you kind of find out this compromise and you move towards one idea and then you describe it how you finish it. The third one that you can use, it's false start, which is more like you're coming, your, your presentation, presentation starts at the, at the future, at the vision. So the vision of Web3 is, you know, like focuses on like data ownership and you start there and then you, you state the arguments and you say, okay, but right now we need to go back to the origin and you talk about the origin maybe of of you know you start at bitcoin or you can talk about modularity and then you move to the present where it's like right now what are we dealing with what are the problems and this is the solution which is our project and this way we're going back to the future that we discussed discuss at the beginning so these are the three techniques um, the way how you can practice storytelling 
is you can use all these three, three techniques. Um, for example, the ethos, pathos, and logos. Um, one time I was with my friend for getting a coffee and we're like, what are we going to, you know, what are we going to do? And then she was like, well, maybe we can practice this. So she just gave me prompts, for example, like convince me that having a dog makes my life better. Or you can, you know, come up with something totally like convince me that staring in the sun for too long hurts my eyes or like, you know, so you can do it with practically everything. And the second one is where you, you define your project in three words. So, um, cause normally this, there's like a three words theory where if you're using too many words, people, they are just like, okay, which one out of these all that you just like threw in at me, I should use. So just use three and then try to, you know, use the techniques that I just discussed and, and try to insert these like three words through the, through the presentation or through the, through this activity. The last one is called campfire and it's maybe more related to the storytelling for, for infinite space bazaar or for, for your house where you choose a character in a group and a setting and then a problem. And then, you know, again, you have like five minutes to kind of like create this story. So main character could be Kayla. Uh, she's in the Infinite Space Bazaar and she lost her way to her house. And then you can start, <laughs> yes. And then you can go through the process that Kayla described and actually, you know, talk about it and, and share what everyone came up with. Um, now moving on how to make a, you know, great presentation First of all, I would like to say that the good thing for us is that no one pays attention to what you say. <laughs> they read more, and but mostly the 70%, they pay attention, like how does that make them feel? And how do you present yourself towards them, to the audience? Now, if you wanna make a great presentation, um, online presentation, you need to, first of all, define the goal of your presentation. So with uh, your projects, it could be, you know, like introducing your project, making sure that your under, uh, audience understand. Uh, with that, you need to understand who you're presenting to. So sometimes when I know who is the person that I'm going to be talking to, and I maybe, you know, my intentions are to con like, convince them or like, you know, like, for example, if you want to strive good in hackathon, you should learn something maybe about the judges or something about the audience. And then you can put it to your presentation. And this way you make them more excited because it will relate to them. It will relate to their interests that they have. And you can share a personal story or you can even, you know, the things that they like, you can share within your personal story. Now, during your presentation, you can ask questions. You don't have to make them answer them, but just, you know, they can, they can think about your questions that you put into your presentation. Make it visual, be confident, and always check your connection and quality of your video or mic before. So probably also try to be on time and kind of join before, um, and test every all of these things. Now, many of us haven't been presenting daily. Maybe you guys can get nervous, um, or mostly for me as well as being nervous. So I was listening to this podcast, and I found this interesting um, fact from from a psychologist that he was explaining that physiologically nervousness being nervous and being excited evokes the same feelings in your body. So let's say, you know, like you're getting ready for presentation, but you're nervous. Now to remove your nervousness, because if you're nervous, you get maybe sweaty hands or you start feeling sick. When I'm excited, I get sweaty hands and I'm also like my, my belly, let's say like I have a stomach ache or something. So the only thing what you have to do to remove your nervousness is to say that I'm excited. Like stop saying you're nervous 
just say you're excited and this way you can trick your brain to be more confident and less nervous during your presentations. The next thing that you can do to, to be less or more prepared and also less nervous is you practice because practice makes perfect. You can try using a mirror. Um, you should probably slow down and you should pause from time to time. If you're sitting, sit still. If you're standing, don't move too much. Um, and sometimes I also feel that if you're looking to, to your camera, um, if you're facing it fully, then that can make you nervous too. So if you angle yourself a little bit sideways, it, it feels, it feels kind of like less formal, but you also kind of like ease up. So that helps you always know more information about the topic that you're, you're going to talk about. Before your presentation, you can do some breath work or you can do like a tongue twist or plunge or, you know, um, one more thing that I, I didn't mention here also, and I, I would like to, what I would like to say with the practicing, what also helps me a lot, and I did it last two presentation was, I just go for a walk and then I'm talking to myself. And that wall, that helps a lot too. So that that's, if you guys want to try it, that, that really helps. Um, and then don't forget to use our story techniques because now you kind of already have the structure, the ideas and techniques, what to use. So, so use that because that's going to help you to feel more confident. Now, I just want to talk a little bit more about the community track because not only storytelling is good for your, your technical project, but you are the foundation of this hackathon, the first Infinite Space Bazaar, and you're the first one that joined these houses. And why not to be the one who is telling, who's writing the whole history and also telling the story? So within the community tracks, you can guys work on like the origins of the houses, the lore, the storytelling, the world building. You can come up and create superpowers and strengths for your for your project you can build nfts collections uh, i've seen many projects they now have like passports id stamps like why not to work on that too with the features of of each house you can create merch and designs and and some content so i i would um encourage you to to look into that and really help us to to and to build this community where you are you were the first one who had the chance to to build something like this um the thing that is to do for now which i think you some of you might be ready is we had a i think it's been a month since we announced our hackathon and the kickoff was about two weeks ago three um two weeks and so I created this pitch template, which you can use. And um, so I'm just giving you an example here. This uh, template has five backgrounds, four are for the houses that you're in. And the fifth one is for the inter-house collaboration, if you wanna share that. And what basically does, um, uh, if you wanna introduce your project, this is a great exercise where you just use this template and you write your project name or one liner. What is it that you're doing? And then below you just write one sentence or two sentences to describe your project. And you can share it on, on Twitter or any of your social media um, and see if the audience is interested in what you're building. I would also encourage different hackers to give feedback to each other because you know you can guys give feedback to each other you can reshare you can um and and us as well like we if you're going to be sharing this we'll, we'll happy to give you feedback and and look into your project and i think this is one of the smaller ways how you can practice or it doesn't take too much time and it's helpful for you to test it on the audience um, this is the another example. This is the template for, for people that work. In, they have a team from multiple houses. Um, so, for example, you know, I'm building Infinite Space Bizarities is the NFT collection for the hackathon participants with house features. So this just tells me that there's 
the whole team is from different houses and they're working on this. And, you know, if I see it on Twitter, I can maybe get in touch with them because I'm excited or interested in the same thing. I see how can I help them. Or maybe you know about someone that already does that. So you want to connect them and give them this feedback. So I think this is um, kind of interesting activity for you to test. I will leave the template on Discord. I will share it after after this workshop. And now I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna stop here and let's see if you guys have any questions for us. I actually see one question in the chat from Sammy. Do you think storytelling techniques in blockchain space are different than in other environments such as business, sports, food, for example? Um, in my opinion, I don't think they're different. I think storytelling of all forms and types at its core just evokes some sort of emotion and really appeals to the audience that they're trying to communicate their messaging to. So I've said so many times to a lot of people who work in you know, blockchain, crypto, sometimes you are gonna have a very technical audience who's gonna understand exactly what you're talking about. But if you wanna you know, change your content based off of who you're speaking to, I think it's always best to go for speaking in language that is really simple for people to understand doesn't require any technical understanding or have, you know, like acronyms or sort of, I guess, technical words that maybe aren't known to a wider audience. Um, I think that's just good to do in practice and try and break down your ideas because I personally feel if you can't break your idea down into a simple concept, you may not even understand it yourself. Um, but yeah, no, I think storytelling applies to all areas. It doesn't matter if it's business, sports, food, content, if you see blogs, I mean, everyone is just telling a story in a different way. Um, Even the events, right? Like, for yeah. example, I start somewhere, so um, I think about it in a way that you can either, like, have the event through, like, time or through the space. So mm -hmm. if I'm thinking about, like, game night, I had it in the past, so it was like, okay, so now I need to make the game night related to the storytelling that is more related to the past, so I need to make it related to the to the community as well. So when they enter, you have the beginning. And then when you go through through the space, there's like different things that are waiting for you. And then again, like you're ending with, with the exit. So I feel like I think the templates like like Kayla said, it it's not different. Mm -hmm. I also I think maybe what is handy here is that because we have so many technical terms, making it in a story, it's much easier to explain it to the non-technical person as well yeah. and give them a lot of examples about, I, yeah, it, it makes us easier to understand this what I was talking about before with Yas, like, Yas, if I it would be like, okay, can you explain it? this? You explain it through the easier way, but in a story. So you can talk about facts so you can talk about stories, but talking about facts in a story is always better. Mm -hmm. And makes it, you know, makes it more relevant, relevant and remember it all. I was also going to add in, I think one of the most iconic examples of this is when the iPhone first launched. If anyone remembers, this Steve Jobs came out where he's like, it's a phone, it's a compass, it's connected to the internet. And he just kept repeating that. But never once has he ever brought up like, this is the OS and this is how this works and this is the type of code we use because none of that is really relevant to an audience watching that. I think he was actually just presenting the problem that they had solved with the new iPhone. And that's what made it so groundbreaking and revolutionary. He didn't really need, you know, a pitch deck. He didn't need overly complicated slides. It was very minimal. And it was just about the impact that he was sharing of like, look at this thing that we made. It's beautiful. It's brilliant. It was always focused on, you know, the product and the emotion that it evoked of this being the most sophisticated piece of technology that we've seen. And I'd be interested to see how we can actually kind of leverage that concept again. I mean, everyone knows Steve Jobs to be a great presenter, but how we can use that to talk about like crypto and blockchain of like, okay, we have all these technical components and this is how, you know, the chains work, or this is the difference between being modular or not. But what does that actually mean for an end user? What does that mean for a customer? What can that mean for a business? How does that benefit them? And I think sometimes we're missing that piece. Um, what are the most important practices for developing storytelling skills as the communicators we aim to be? Um, well, 
I guess like the, the things that we discussed before, so I know that sometimes like you should figure it out what is the weakness that you have in the storytelling because you can tell a good story but once you start telling it to people and there's hundred people in front of you maybe you face. So, you know, figure it out the way how to stop this. Um, what it is, as I said, like maybe trying to convince your brain that you're excited instead of nervous or if you if you're sometimes are looking for words like maybe try to read more if you're trying to and i wanted to also mention that i think like developing storytelling skills one thing that you could develop and it's it's good to have for storytelling is being funny like having a something funny to say within within your story because people love to laugh mm -hmm. right Fessy? i'm just using your quote right now but um and and that also makes your your story a little bit exciting um i also think one of the most important practices is actually just practicing and iterating so if you are really focused on being a good presenter verbally and you want to do like on stage present presentations start presenting as practice in front of your friends or in front of your family and get their feedback of like, was this funny? Did this make the impact it needed to? And just trying to practice on different audiences to see if the message is landing the way you want it to. And like Nat said, you know, just trying to keep things concise. How do you articulate what it is that you want to say in a way that's meaningful? And like, how do you always incorporate humor or emotion into it that actually is going to impact your audience? Um, I think also one of the practices that we did with Kayla when we were at the beach club, which was, um, I hosted this four days event for, for only for girls. And we did a bunch of things that um, makes us grow on like a career level and also personal level. And Kayla came with this uh, storytelling activity where we had to, she was like, all right, everyone bring your wallets. And I was like, okay, fair enough. I know you like two days and you're wanting me to bring my wallet. Okay. So then we have to all brought like our, our wallets, bring our wallets. And she was like, pass it on to the next person. So we pass it on to the next person. And then we had to write a story about the person depending on the wallet that, that we got. So you could look into the wallet, like you could see if it has cash and maybe doesn't have cash. And, and some of the stories that came out were super hilarious. And also sometimes it was like super emotional. So sometimes we cry over laughter. Sometimes we cry because it was just very like deep story. Um, sometimes we cry because of misunderstanding of what is expire date and what is the birth date. <laughs> and um, but but that was really good practice. And I think like if you have a group of friends, like this is really, really, really fun to to kind of develop your st storytelling. And that was thanks to Kayla. Yeah, thank you. I agree. I think even signing up for like an improv class or anything like that could also be fun. And I think we have one more question from Nicholas. What is your favorite myth? That's a good question. Mm. I never had this. Do you have a? Do you have an? No, I don't have an answer. I would say maybe like a great. Thing. Yeah, I have to think about it. I'll post it on Twitter. What is your favorite myth? Bigfoot. <laughs> wow. Mermaids. Yeah, I think like I have this. I from from when I was young. So we used to travel a lot, like long distances, with with my family, and there was this forest behind us and there was there were always these like red lights coming out of the forest and i don't know the terms in english because it was just made up names in czech but my dad was always like there's this like magician with of like a bloody dog and the bloody dog takes the kids and 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 like it expanded to like when we went to play golf, there was this like person that who knew this myth too, and then he had, he got bitten by a dog. And then when someone would ask him like, 
what happened to you? Like, it was this, like, bloody dog in, from this, like, forest. And I remember I was, like, super scared about it. But at the same time, I was really enjoying this myth. Um, yeah. Unicorns, big food, the Denver airport theories. Yes. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. It's a, a good YouTube, um, uh, the, the, like, an episode on. Rain in Dubai. Yeah. Yeah. Another myth right now, it's very popular in crypto. Crypto people just causing all these unnatural, natural storms and earthquakes. What are your favorite success stories with Web3 narrative building? Um, I would say like the, the, the ones that I like are from Celestia. Um, I think Ekram is doing a really good job in um, he, you know, with the build whatever, with Celestia underneath. Modular. Not maximalism, modular. But these are really strong words and, and kind of like it resonates with everyone. Um, so so I, this, is, this is my favorite story. Thinking modular. Yeah. Thinking about modularity. Awesome. Thank you both so much. Um, I want to do ask anyone if they have any more questions for Nat and Kayla uh, to please drop them in the chat. Um, but if you all have any last messages for everyone, uh, it would be great to hear. And if there are no questions, we'll go ahead and shut this down. We have a thank you, Queens. Oh, thank uh, you. Thank you. You can and follow us on Twitter too. I was gonna say Nat and I will be there. Good question, actually. Uh, yeah, if there's, is there a best place to reach out to you, uh, like Discord, Twitter? I'd say probably Twitter for me. Cool. We have two more, which is what is Jar's favorite story? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. Build whatever, bro. <laughs> yeah, build whatever. Um, I think out of Yaz's answers, the Denver airport, Denver airport theories are the the funniest. <laughs> Especially when we're going, it's just like looking for the signs. I need to see. I need to see the theories. I haven't read up on all of them. Uh, I'll I'll send you the, the video. It's like thirty minutes long. I've been watching it like at the Denver airport. I was like, okay, where are those things? Um, favorite house right now. Uh, right answer, Lumen Tree. All of our like all of them are my babies, but. Um, According to the questions, the questionnaire that I did, I am a lumen tree, so hell yeah, let's go. Thank you all, lumen trees. I see all of you guys. Um, okay. Yeah. Let's go. Cool. Let's go. I can't wait to see everyone's presentations. Yeah, we're excited. Let us know if you have more questions or if you need some help or just reach out to us. We're always here. Yep. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. Matt and Kayla, uh, thank you everyone for tuning in. And uh, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow for two workshops. Uh, first, we have Rollkit App Chains in Rust, and then a workshop with Al Protocol uh, on supercharging your rollup. So, thank you again for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Bye. 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 See you.